Ever heard of a ward so unsettling they call it the Vanishing Ward? Oh, spooky. That's where we're diving today. Blackwood Asylum. A place seemingly steeped in mystery. It's not your average haunted house story. Patients have actually disappeared from this ward. And not just a handful, enough to earn it. That chilling nickname. Blackwood Asylum. You'd think with a nickname like that, Blackwood would have shut it down. Yeah. Or at least, you know, investigated. But it remains open. Its dark history seemingly ignored. Almost like they're unfazed. Yeah. Which is maybe even more unsettling. And that eerie feeling, it only intensifies when you learn about Leonard Thompson, our first vanishing patient. He wasn't some volatile case. Right. Prone to escapes or outbursts. Leonard was just an average guy, loved his crossword puzzles. Uh, okay. Even if he did have that slightly annoying humming habit. Well, there you go. Leonard's case, while unsettling, it uh, highlights a common issue in mental health institutions of that era. A focus on containment rather than understanding. He was admitted in 1976 for what doctors then called, get this, mild paranoia. Mild paranoia. Imagine being labeled as paranoid within the walls of Blackwood. Ooh. You almost have to wonder if that diagnosis was a self-fulfilling uh, prophecy. Right. Like, those orderlies keep winking at each other. Are they talking about me? But even considering his diagnosis, Leonard's disappearance is strange. And we're not talking about him just wandering off. He vanished from a locked ward in the middle of the night with security cameras supposedly watching his every move. Yeah. Security protocols in 1970s asylums, well, they were certainly different than what we have today. While it's unlikely someone could just stroll out unnoticed, the idea of sophisticated surveillance systems like we see now just wasn't the norm. That said, Leonard's disappearance goes beyond a simple lapse in security. He was caught on camera one moment, yeah. then gone the next. Okay, now that's just straight out of a horror movie. I know, right? A real-life disappearing act. But before we get into that, I'm curious about something. You mentioned mental health practices back then. Did they ever really get to the bottom of why Leonard was there in the first place? This is where the historical context gets really interesting. Mental health treatment in the 1970s was a far cry from what we consider best practices today. Right. Medications were often used um, liberally. Yeah. And talk therapy, when offered, could be, well, less than patient-centered. <laughs> it makes you wonder if Leonard's paranoia was truly the issue or perhaps a symptom of something else entirely. Or even a reaction to the treatment itself, right? It's chilling to think his environment might have exacerbated whatever he was going through. Okay, so we have Leonard, seemingly a regular guy dealing with something we can only speculate about in this asylum with, you know, questionable practices. And then, poof, he vanishes from a locked room. What happened next? Here's where the story takes an even stranger turn. They did find Leonard, but it wasn't on the streets or, you know, wandering lost. He was discovered three days later in the asylum's basement, muttering about a room under the floor. A room under the floor. Was he delirious? Having some kind of, like, breakdown? What did Blackwood make of that little revelation? That's the unsettling part. Yeah. Blackwood's reaction was, well, essentially non-existent. Really? They documented the incident, put Leonard back in his room. Wow. And that was that. So no investigation into the supposed room under the floor. Nope. No reevaluation of his mental state. Nope. No changes to security protocols. Well, thing. Hold on. They just dismissed it. A patient disappears from a locked ward, reappears muttering about secret rooms, and they carry on with business as usual. Yep. That's either extreme negligence or, well, it makes you wonder if they knew more than they let on. Maybe they already knew about this room under the floor. That's the question, isn't it? Was Leonard's room a um, manifestation of his paranoia? Okay. A genuine architectural anomaly? Uh-huh. Or perhaps something else entirely? And if they did know about it, why wasn't it addressed? This is where Blackwood silence becomes deafening. Without their cooperation, we're left to piece together fragments of a much larger puzzle. A puzzle that gets even more complicated because, as I recall, Leonard's story doesn't end in that basement. He vanishes again, right? And this time, there's no reappearance, no cryptic muttering. It's like he actually disappears into thin air. What makes the second vanishing different from the first? The second time is where the uh, truly chilling elements come into play. Remember how Blackwood seemed almost indifferent to Leonard's initial disappearance? This time, their reaction, or, well, lack thereof, is even more disturbing. A week after returning to his room, Leonard vanishes again. No sign of forced entry. Oh, wow. No witnesses. Just an empty room. 
The only thing left behind was a half-finished crossword puzzle on his bedside table. Okay, crossword puzzle. Maybe he was working on it right before he, you know, disappeared. I mean, it's Blackwood. Maybe puzzles were part of their therapy regime. It's highly unlikely Blackwood would encourage, like, a leisure activity right before bed. Mm, okay, yeah. Especially in a ward like this. But this wasn't just any crossword puzzle. The word gone was circled repeatedly over and over again, uh. as if um, whoever filled it in wanted to make absolutely sure that message was received. Goosebumps. I'm getting actual goosebumps over here. <laughs> it's like he knew he was going to vanish again and wanted to leave a message, you know, assuming it makes a message and not just a very dedicated crossword enthusiast having a moment. It adds a whole other layer of creepy to this already creepy situation. It really is. It's like something out of a mystery novel, but with an extra dose of unsettling. A man vanishes not once, but twice from a locked room. The second time he leaves a chilling message behind and the institution where it all happens, they just, I don't know. Shrug and change the sheets. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what do we make of Blackwood's reaction or lack thereof to all of this. This is where our deep dive takes us from the realm of spooky stories to a deeper examination of institutional power okay. and how it intersects with, you know, individual lives. Right. Blackwood's silence on Leonard's disappearances, mm -hmm. particularly the second one with that gone message. Yeah. It speaks volumes. Right. On one hand, it could point to um, a deliberate cover up. Okay. A desire to bury an event that could, well, expose their failings. Right, like they're trying to protect themselves, their reputation, their funding, you know, whatever it might be. Exactly. But, and this is where things get even more complex, their silence could also be a chilling form of indifference. Oh. Perhaps in their eyes, Leonard was just another patient, another bed to fill. His disappearance, whether a result of his mental state or, you know, some other unknown factor, was simply not worth the effort of a thorough investigation. That's a chilling thought, that someone could just disappear and be dismissed so easily. It makes you wonder if Leonard had been from a different background. Yeah. Had someone advocating for him, you know, on the outside, would Blackwood's response have been different? Or would he still be just another forgotten name in their records? That's a question um, we're left grappling with. Mm -hmm. And it's one that extends far beyond the walls of Blackwood. Leonard's story, as unsettling as it is, forces us to confront, well, larger societal issues. Right. The treatment of those deemed different, the power dynamics within institutions, and the fine line between neglect and, well, intentional harm. Right. Right. So we come to the end of this deep dive with, it seems like, more questions than answers. Yeah. Did Leonard escape Blackwood, you know, finding freedom in a way no one could have predicted? Yeah. Did something more sinister befall him within those walls? Or did he perhaps find that room under the floor, you know, metaphorical escape from a reality he could no longer bear? We may never know the truth about Leonard Thompson's fate, but his story and the unsettling silence surrounding it serve as a, well, stark reminder. A challenge to question what we think we know, to advocate for those who cannot advocate for themselves, and to never stop searching for answers even when they seem lost in the shadows. Leonard Thompson mm -hmm. vanished <laughs> twice, leaving behind a trail of unsettling questions and a chilling message that seems to, you know, reverberate even today. Yeah. Blackwood Asylum remains, a silent sentinel to a mystery that may never be fully solved. And we, the listeners, are left to ponder, you know, the nature of truth, the limits of perception, and the unsettling possibility that some stories, well, we simply don't have a neat and tidy ending.